Thanks for joining me today, Brent. Introduce yourself to everybody. I'm Brent Dusing, founder and CEO of TruePlay. Very cool. So you are in the gaming industry, and I think at at some point in time, uh, you know, anybody born after 1980 thought, "Hey, I want to get into the gaming industry." But what is it for you? Why did you decide to get into this? You know, I, I, a couple of reasons. One is I grew up playing games and making games as a kid. You know, you mentioned being born uh, after 1980. I was born a little bit before that, but but probably like you. When the Nintendo Entertainment System came in the home, it was a step function to what video games meant mm -hmm. to an entire generation. It was like what Star Wars was to movies. It was just something completely different. And so uh, grew up doing that. Also grew up designing and making like board games and tabletop games that friends of mine would actually enjoy playing. They'd come over and say, let's play the game you made. So so it's something I always had an interest in. Uh, I, did a, I did a tech company uh, prior to my, my first. So, so I've done three companies. My first one was just a mobile a uh, couponing company. The next one was a gaming company. And what we realized with that second one was there really is an opportunity to uh, to reach people for the kingdom, right? To share God's truth with people um, using video games as a medium. You know, it, it, it's, it's interesting, right? So in our culture, for a long time, the novel was almost the cultural conversation, was the, almost like the, the bedrock of the cultural conversation. And then in around the 1940s and 50s, for sure, it became movies. Right. Mm -hmm. And then last decade, it became prestige television shows, you know, the Stranger Things and Yellowstone right, and right. Movies, th shows like that. But for for younger, the youngest generation, for kids, the the cultural kind of, you know, third rail, if you will, or the, the, the bedrock mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. is video games. You know, kids spend more time every week playing video games than any other medium. You know, when you look at where they're at, Fortnite, Minecraft, Roblox. And look, there, there's issues with some of those those uh, platforms and the content that kids consume or what they're exposed to. And so at True Play, our whole thrust is, look, let's go, you know, the generation, the youngest generation of children that we're in charge of stewarding as dads is right now really under assault mm. from all kinds of levels, primarily through media and messaging. And, and so let's bring something that's fantastic and awesome that kids are going to love, but that also everything we do is woven with God's truth with the goal of changing an entire generation's perspective on who God is. That's awesome. So, you know, you you talked about, you know, being in gaming and, and doing all of this. You know, when I was growing up, my gaming platforms, I think I started, we got the discount Atari 2600 uh, when it was being phased out. I remember and, that, yep. yeah. The, and the, then that we, last media push they made at the end, right? I remember, yeah. Right, yeah. right. And there was all the, you'd get, walk into like KB Toys and there would be all of the games out there and... Man, I feel very old now. <laughs> but, you know, as you were kind of talking about just a second ago, you know, gaming for me when I was seven is very different for today's seven-year-old. You know, it's gotten a lot more robust. So for for parents, kind of tell us a little bit about, obviously, graphics are different, but there's also like the big social aspect of gaming yes. for today's kids, right? Yeah, so so the, you know, the, the some multiple things have changed. Um in, in the landscape, obviously, since, since we were children, one of which is uh, instant access to anything, right? You, you can you can watch any movie, TV show, or play any game or listen to any song in about 10 seconds on, on a device that you're carrying with you yeah. all the time, which is so different than, you know, your my experience as a kid, which was either have to go to the store and buy it or know someone who had it or rent the movie at Blockbuster, right? Those were our three options. So... Um, the problem with that is <clears throat> there's so much more toxic content that's instantly available. And it's hard as a parent to know what you can trust and what you can't. You know, it's kind of like if somebody said, well, there's a hurricane that's going to hit your house. Okay, well, what do I do? Oh, don't worry. Just stand on the beach and hold your hands up and you'll stop the hurricane. That's, you know, that's stupid, right? right. That, but that's how it feels as a parent. You're kind of, there's this onslaught of awful stuff that's thrust on your kids <clears throat> And you can't, as a parent, stand over your kid's shoulder every day, or every minute of every day. You can't. And and so when you think about, you talked about kind of on, be, games being online, one of the results of online games has been, you know, chat rooms. And, and there's been a lot of child predatory issues. You know, there's a there's a lawsuit that's recently filed by concerned parents who said their, child's or, their children were preyed upon on the Roblox platform. And so that's something that uh, people are starting to pay more attention to more than they already have. And beyond just having kind of online, you know, access to, to people online, 
which is one issue. It's also, I think, at a more fundamental level, the messaging that's thrust in through whatever media form it is, but particularly in games, what's okay, what's not okay, what's what's acceptable and what's not acceptable is so different than, than where things were even 10 years ago. Mm. And so the absurdity of that has led to the following things. Um, anxiety, suicide, and depression rates are all-time highs for children, which exactly mirrors the rise of social media on smartphones. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there's so much uh, drug, not just drug legalization, but kind of the glorification of drug usage throughout so many media forms that now there's evidence that kids, you know, teens getting into drugs or getting high degrees of schizophrenia, brain damage, you know, we're able to study those things so much more than we were when we were children. And the sad thing is the results are much worse. Mm -hmm. The worst thing is that this is really interesting. While over 60 percent of American adults believe in God, only 31 percent of children do. Because because if you think about it, the average child's on the screen 52 and a half hours a week. They're only at church 30 minutes a week because the average only half of kids go to church now. And if you do, you're there for an hour. Mm -hmm. So you're getting literally over 100 to 1 exposure, right, right. Of, of usually neutral to toxic content where God's either not there or, or the things of God or the reality of Jesus Christ or the Bible are spoken of negatively. And so with True Play, so look, let's develop a platform kids are going to love with all different types of entertainment options that's going to contain God's truth in every facet of, of, of their experiences. Right. And that's awesome. You talked about something just a second ago, and that's the communication aspect of, you know, how this works. Should parent, What should parents really be aware of when considering allowing their kids to use a headset or the chat function inside of a game? I think that you've got to be aware of of, of what's going on. I, I look like one of the the best piece of advice I got from a, an older parent was don't ever let devices be used <clears throat> in your house in non public places. In other words, don't let mm. your kids take devices into the room. Yeah, yeah. Because then you you don't you have almost no oversight of what's happening. Um, I think knowing <clears throat> excuse me who they're connecting with, who they're interacting with. Inside the chat, you know, it's one thing if it's two or three of their close <clears throat> of their close friends. It's another thing if it's, um, you know, multiple other people that they don't know and strangers, then that, that can lead to pretty serious consequences. Right. I think another thing you were kind of talking about how our kids can sometimes they're seeing society different through gaming. One of the things that I've picked up on and watching my kid play games, it's when you make a contact on a game, they call it a friend. It's like you send a friend request or you gain a friend, but it's not a friend unless you actually go to school with this person. But most of like the friends that kids make online are really just Internet strangers that the game is just saying and say, hey, instead of this is a contact for you to play the game with, it's really your friend. And so I feel like personally, and I want to hear what you think here, the, the term friend is kind of being shifted here from a face-to-face -face relationship to just strictly like an online relationship. What are your thoughts there? That's a really good point, Andy. I, I never thought about it, but as you were as you were explaining that, it, I, I think it all goes back to Facebook, doesn't it? You know, when Facebook, when I first got on Facebook, whenever it was, 2005, 2006, and you would use the word friend, but then if I zoom out and I think, how many of those people that I'm connected with on Facebook are really my friends? Like real friends? I don't know, 25%, 15%, yeah. 10%. And you're right, you know, the the... Part of what's happening in our society is we're changing and shifting the meaning of words to mean things they don't necessarily they didn't mean when we were kids or that they don't right. they're not really defined to mean <clears throat> friend is one of those and you know you think about what's a friend a friend is somebody you can count on that you enjoy that that you love and in, in, you know in some in some form of, of you right know, brotherly love or familial love or you know affection uh and and yet what they're calling somebody that you might know as a friend um, it's kind of like Judas, you know, was Judas, you know, was Judas Jesus' friend? No, because he worked, conspired against him and betrayed him. Did they know each other? Yeah. Would they, you know, they know each other's names or they talk to, they interact? Yes, but that wasn't his friend. And I mm -hmm. think what you raised is a really important distinction as to what, what does it really mean to be somebody's friend? And and by by distorting that word to young minds, that can have some pretty serious relational consequences. Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Um, one of the things I want to talk to you about, about being in the gaming industry, um, I feel like Roblox is always in the news. I get a lot of you know parents who are concerned about Roblox. We've heard these horror stories of predators finding kids online and meeting up in real life. And then there's this lawsuit that I think you talked about just a second ago about you know Roblox not protecting kids from adult content. So my question to you, being in the gaming industry, is what's going on with Roblox right now? I mean, I think the, I think the headlines and the truth is pretty self-evident. I mean, one idea as a parent is not to let your kids use Roblox. I mean, that's I don't know how, how any more I direct I can be. I mean, there's there's there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of content that gets made, you know, user generated content mm -hmm. that you as a parent have no idea what's really being done or said. And, and, and there are some pretty dark things that happen. There certainly have been um, some issues with uh, you know children having conversations with people they don't know. I was, I mean, I've seen it happen. I mean, I, I not on Roblox, but on a different platform uh, that was really popular. I won't mention the game, but very popular game two or three years ago and saw one of the, it's kind of a multiplayer game and saw one of the players start to say some inappropriate things to children. And there mm -hmm. wasn't a lot I could do besides just kind of try to flame him and and say pretty harsh things to that guy and like, get out of here. But you know, you you as another player, seeing something bad happen, seeing somebody try to take advantage of a child, uh, you know, there's not a lot you can do. Like, you know, you, I couldn't just go kill his character or, or, mm -hmm. hit, you know, disconnect on his side, you know? So the point is there's a lot of it, a lot of that goes on. A lot of it's fairly unfettered. And I think there's, um, there are a lot of great alternatives your child could be doing instead uh, that don't expose them to those level of dangers. And I, I, frankly, I just don't even see what the, what the point is, why you would let your child do that as a parent, if, but to be honest. Right. You you brought up a really good point when, you know, going back to, you know, when we were playing the Atari 2600, like that content was created by the company, like it was storyboarded yeah. out. Everybody created everything. Everybody was on the <laughs> same page. I think maybe there was actually even some maybe government oversight there for a while. But Roblox in particular is user generated content. Explain to us what that is and what the potential dangers there may be. Well, yeah. So user-generated content is, and that's really been one of Roblox's biggest innovations, right? It let people, average people can develop their own games and then let other people play them. YouTube is a great example of user-generated content, mm, right? Almost, yeah, everything, right. almost everything on YouTube is something that just an, an average consumer made. There are some, in some ways that's great, you know, because you, you can go uh, on YouTube, for example, you can go explain to people, um, you know, how to change the oil on your car in a way that you might not have gotten a great explainer video um, if you just went to you know some corporate website, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the, the downside when you get into kids' content, when you get into making impressions on young minds, when you go into distorting souls, is that, again, you don't, you as a parent don't have the ability to go through and see all the content in every, every you know, game that's made on Roblox any more than you would uh, in, you know, in the old days of, you know, going into going to Netflix today and watching every movie and seeing if if it's OK, you know, screening everything you can't. Mm -hmm. you can't. And so um, the, the I think it's incumbent upon the platforms to be able to filter out what's acceptable, and what's not. And the problem is they haven't. Mm -hmm. right? The problem is that, that on, on all of the platforms, there's too much content available that's really negative and harmful for children whether it's sexual content that's completely inappropriate for kids or, you know, I don't mind a little bit of fighting and, you know, we, we right. have games, sword play and combat, but just horribly gruesome violence, mm -hmm. um, you know, demonic witchcraft things, um, you know, the glorification of drug use, you know, uh, uh, all of those things are not, um, you know, it, it, they're not, they're not held back. They're not screened out. They're almost encouraged. Mm -hmm. And it, by so many platforms, and it, it's not just Roblox that does this, that I think is, as a parent, again, it's hard to say, well, where can where is a safe place for my kid? Where is a digital playground I can let my kid loose? Right. Right. You know, like when we were kids, you could go to the park and you could run and play around with your friends and you didn't have to worry about it. Right. Well, now children live in these digital playgrounds, mm -hmm. right? Roblox, Minecraft, the App Store, you know, things like that. And so it's saying, so the concept is, well, how do we give our kids something where here you can go play in the playground and you as a parent know wherever they go in the playground, they're going to be fine. Right. Yeah. And because you're still watching them yeah. there on that playground and all of that, which is great. Okay. So you brought up a good point here. 
we as parents can't know everything. You said earlier we can't always be over their shoulder. How can parents keep up with the you know the potential problems and dangers that are occurring in the gaming industry just in general? I think as a parent, you've got to be selective on on the content that your kids use. So there there's certain content that is perfectly harmless for your kid to, to use. You know, cer certain games, for example, on, on the Nintendo Switch, I, I don't have any problem with with my kids playing or using, right? And there are there are certain games on the on the App Store uh, that I don't have any problem with my kids using, right? But the problem you get into, whether it's some of these platforms we talked about, like a Roblox, or whether it's just certain games, like I had an I had a instance with one of my daughters, she was playing the ballerina ice skating game, it's completely harmless. But the problem is then there are these ads for the zombie right. apocalypse game. And then I'm getting woken up at, 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 you know, three in the morning because she had a nightmare about a zombie apocalypse have, after having played the game the day before. So that's again, to get it, getting back to why do we build true play? Because it's one platform with a whole bunch of content, games, videos, digital comics, where it's one app and the you can just let your kid loose on the playground. And they can enjoy it. And there's a ton of things that they will enjoy. And then come, you know, you, you don't have to sit, feel like you've got to stand over their shoulder um, every 15 seconds because it's not realistic for any parent to be able to do that. Right. Absolutely. So let me ask you this uh, from from one dad to another here for all the parents who are listening. If there's a game that our kids want to play and I don't want to let them play it because I know that it doesn't agree with the values of our household or it's going to be too scary for them. They don't understand. How do I help my kids understand my decision as a parent. What are some tips that you can yeah, give us sure. about having that conversation? I, I would think about the following things. I, I um, you know, one of the most kids, once they get to about six or seven, understand the concept of a seatbelt, right? You know, mm -hmm. I'm not making you wear a seatbelt because I want to make you uncomfortable or or give you one more thing to do or scold you if you forgot. I'm making you wear your seatbelt because we're going to drive on this fast road. And if I have to hit the brakes or if God forbid we get hit, I need to know you're going to be okay. And if you start with that, and you know, if you start with the 10 commandments, right? What it, you know, and I won't go through all 10, but one of them is about sex outside of marriage. One of them is about um, killing. One of them is about stealing. One of them is about worshiping anything that isn't, isn't Yahweh. Right. Right. Well, you know, it start. it's easy to start to frame what entertainment choices they have against the context of the Ten Commandments through that lens, right? And children know at a pretty young age, especially if you've, you know, read the Bible to them at home and taken them to church, and as, as I think it's in Deuteronomy, it's spoken to them about the things of God, mm -hmm. they'll know, they'll have a sense for, innate sense of right and wrong. In fact, I think often children at, at that age, around six, seven, eight, nine, ten, actually know right and wrong better than a lot of adults because they haven't been been twisted or or compromised by the world and what by by those kind of things yet they, there's still a level of almost uh innate innate moral purity or, or conscience you know i'll give you an example i had a woman who we interviewed to work here and she was working on a game at another company that was very dark mm -hmm. and she was working from home and she had her eight-year-old daughter walk in the room and say mom how can you even work on something like that mm -hmm. because they were a christian family Right. Right. And so that's what I'm saying is I think if you explain to your child through that lens, just like a seatbelt, hey, I'm not making you wear a seatbelt because I'm trying to be a mean dad. I'm making you wear a seatbelt because I care about you. And, and at, at, at some age, at seven, eight, nine, you know, why can't I eat ice cream for breakfast? Like they understand that. Right. There, right. There's a reason that there are rules and principles that are actually better for you in the long run. Right. So kind of what I hear you saying is it shouldn't be a surprise to your kids when you say no to a game because you have set this up in your daily lifestyle as a parent. This is what's acceptable for you and this is what's not. So it should just kind of, you know, fit in with your family dynamic. Right. I think so. I mean, another way to articulate the point is like poison. You know, look, mm. I wouldn't do, be doing a good job as your dad if I let you eat breakfast cereal that had poison or if you got to had, you know, there's was an issue a few years ago at Flint, Michigan, kids were drinking water that was right, essentially right. poisoned. I wouldn't be doing my job as a parent if I let you consume something that ultimately harmed you. Right. Mm -hmm. That's easier to understand when it's, when it's poison or lead in your water, a little harder to understand when it's, you know, sex, gruesome violence, witchcraft, um, What's uh you know drug you know drug drug glorification, 
but actually not that hard for kids to start to get the sense of, okay, I, I, I see where this is going. And so when you kind of frame it in that light, you, you know, nobody wants to be fed poison, right. you know, whether it's physical poison or, 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 or poisoning your soul. And I think that's, that's one way to frame it as a parent. Very cool. So real quickly, before we wrap up here, let me ask you this, you know, growing up in making games and playing games, what was one of your favorite games growing up that you were like, oh man, I, I missed this. I'm nostalgic for this game. What's one of those titles oh, the, that the, you really the enjoyed? Of Zelda, the Legend of Zelda games. I mean, the, the first one, the, the, the eight bit, I think, I think the 16 bit version, the, the, uh, the link to the past third one they did on the, on the Nintendo, the super Nintendo is genius. I mean, in fact, I just replayed it, uh, just two or three months ago. I re I replay it every so often because you know what Shigeru Miyamoto and his team were able to do with so limited of a of a footprint and microprocessors, right? That the grandiosity of what they built, the you know the music, the uh, the art design, the level, the, you know the the dungeons designs, um, and the way they wove in the story, especially in in Link to the Past, are truly brilliant. I mean, I, I th he probably he probably doesn't get enough credit for being such a genius for all the things he created. Um, but it, but what, what Miyamoto was able to do is remarkable. Yeah, that's fine. And you know what? And everybody still knows the name Zelda. Everybody still knows all these years later, which is fantastic. So yeah. Brent, thank you so much for your time. Where can people find out more about you and true play? Yeah. Go to trueplaygames.com uh, and check it out. It's, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a platform for your children. There's all kinds, there's over a hundred hours of games, videos, content. Some are Bible games. Some are based on this IP we have of, uh, the Rimverse, where these it's, it was a grandiose epic story. Uh, your your family will love. We're finding children love it. Parents love it. We're we're more than doubling the average child's exposure to God's truth. So they get into true play. They enjoy it. Uh, our games are performing uh, just as well as the top ten games in the app store. We're finding families just love it, and um, and we we'd love for you guys to check it out. And hopefully, it's uh, it's something we're coming alongside parents. Hopefully, it's something that's a blessing for your family. So thanks for uh, taking the time to check out true play. Absolutely, man. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your, your expertise. God bless you and your journey, buddy. Thank you. Good to meet you today, Andy.